Hello, welcome back. In the last part of the Venice series, we kept LARPing to a maximum by invading Ethiopia in a campaign where we are Italy. Lizard the Japan player DDoSed the game, Arianam and China scored a victory against Russia, and Spain survived against the coalition that betrayed him. All in all, it's been an absolutely mental campaign and it's going to continue. The pure chaos of session 6 has died down and you saw it at the end of the last part, but we've gone into session 7 and I introduced some of the people who are coming in to substitute and many of the original players who were being substituted have come back. For example, Loco is back on the dual monarchy, the Danubia player is back, the Zarao player is back and he actually wasn't happy with what his substitute did in regards to that coalition against Spain. He actually wants to continue being their ally. And the China player is back too. The mastermind behind that Spanish betrayal was of course Lizard on Japan and he's gone now, being replaced by Midnight who has some experience on this Japan having played it for about half an hour during another one of Lizard's episodes of Toxicity. You will know him better as the Mughal Empire player though. So the original players of many countries are back after being substituted, but a new session also means other countries have to be substituted. And as we saw towards the end of the previous video, this includes Burgundy being substituted by none other than the Bohemia player. Also, Spain is being subbed. Many people have asked me to do an overview of the major players in the world, like I did in the Muscovy series, but there really haven't been any good moments to just stop and look at the world. When one war ends, another two have already begun, so there really isn't any time to relax. But what I will make sure to do more is show you the relevant stats and brigade counts of countries that are about to go into wars. So for this episode, I'm going to show you the major powers in Asia. The changing around of players that I just told you about is affecting absolutely every nation in Asia. What was arguably a hugbox of all the Asian nations kicking Spain, now is going to be changing. Anyway, here are the stats for these countries, starting of course with the beast itself, China, absolutely massive. It has the usual terrifying population and brigade counts, but this one is really lagging behind developmentally. No, I'm not referring to the player on it, I mean their literacy and their industry is really far behind. Now, they are technically the number one industrial power already, but they're doing that on a mere 3.6% craftsman percentage, which is extremely low, so his industry is bad relative to the size of his country. The Danubians, for example, have 16.6%. 6% craftsmen. That's the long term consequence of their very long struggle against Japan now making itself known in the late game. So they have a lot of vulnerabilities now but if they are left untouched for say another 10 years they can come back to be stronger in the late late game. So moving across the sea to Japan, this is a country that suffered an absolutely massive crushing defeat in its attempted conquest of China, but losing the conquest of China doesn't mean that Japan is a bad country at all, they're still a very strong country, a strong naval power. And they have great colonies such as Bengal and other areas of India. Japan really needed a new player, because Lizard devoted his whole campaign to conquering China and when that didn't work he couldn't cope with it anymore, even though Japan is still a stable good country, it needed someone fresh without all that baggage and that's what they've got. The first thing that stands out about Zarao is the discrepancy between their accepted pops and their pops overall. They've got a lot of good colonies which mean they can punch above their weight. And those accepted pops who live in the states on his home island are very literate, making Zarao one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world, building a very good navy. For all intents and purposes, Spain has in fact been an Asian country ever since they partitioned Aragon with me. They've done absolutely nothing in Europe since then but they've done everything in India and also Africa. They came so close to losing their status as one of the biggest players in Asia going to sanctions and getting that huge betrayal, but they've gotten to the other side of that now and they're alright. They are being substituted in this session, but he has clear instructions, unlike the subs in the last session. Why should they do anything in Europe? They have the opportunity to just sit there behind the Pyrenees and go off in the world and conquer many exotic lands. And that's how they became one of the strongest great powers in the world. They have one of the biggest navies, I'll talk about the navy sizes later when it's relevant. Let's give an honourable mention to Ethiopia who likes to get involved over here. I've shown you their force limit because their actual brigade count hasn't recovered after the beating that Hungary and Italy just gave it. We've seen the opportunism of this country trying to get colonies by joining a side in the European war, but will Scandinavia and Burgundy, the Europeans that they chose to help, actually return the favour when they're in danger? Would Batavia even take a bullet for them? You saw that they joined the anti-Spanish coalition, but that whole thing fell apart and the Ethiopia player ended up leaving. So they've got a new fresh start, just like Japan, so we'll see what kind of path a new leader of this country can carve. Italy might still have unfinished business with them though. Anyway, what is actually going on as we head into this part? Well, there's two European wars going on. They're technically different wars, but they intertwine very closely and they're part of the same overall conflict. 
The first war is the remnant of the major war that happened over the last two parts. Half the participants have separately pieced out, leaving it as the dual monarchy in Danubians versus Batavia, Scandinavia and Arcadia. The other war was the dual monarchy truce break on Burgundy that I came up with. Burgundy had separately surrendered out of the aforementioned war, and in order to try and turn this into our advantage in this rule that I disagree with, I urged the dual monarchy to truce break on Burgundy. The intention was to give the dual monarchy a chance to sort of 1v1 Burgundy even with the other war going on around us, and Italy, Hungary and the Danubians could sort of maybe protect the dual monarchy from potential Scandinavians getting involved there, but that might get really awkward because we're not at war with Burgundy, only Scandinavia. But then Hungary and Italy got the best deal we could possibly get, which was to wipe peace out of the original war. Our side had already taken 100 war score from that and it was getting into the situation, a funny nation situation, where Italy was getting blockaded and occupied for no reason. Scandinavia Scandinavia, Arcadia and Batavia technically, if they wanted to, have the capability to beat us and take Africa off of us again. So even though it puts the dual monarchy in a little bit more danger than I originally intended with that move, it's completely obvious for us to accept that deal, it's a no-brainer. So as Italy and Hungary enjoy our victory, take our new colonies, the dual monarchy and the Danubians are left in a precarious situation and we wish them the best. Also, there's a war involving every American nation going on right now, a sort of North versus South here, as the two South American nations try to protect Gran Colombia from the two Northern ones. Right, so, I will have a fucking navy now. I will have a navy for the next war. What, uh, what type of ships are we talking? Uh, I'm getting the last port, but I don't have steamers unlocked. <laughs> you don't have an insignificant amount of ports, you know. You've got actually... I know, that's why That's why I'm actually getting the tech. Holy shit, I'm, I'm coring my fucking African Teradoro state. I'm gonna get a fucking cord port there, lads. Isn't the Chinese Indian lands technically an enclave? He doesn't have a border to it, it's blue border. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rule yeah. dispute, Call, I mean, pause the game, yeah, holy shit. Hey, 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 hey. If, if anybody invades him, you literally can't do anything. <laughs> Pause the fucking game, guys. That's fine, because it's already happened. Blame the old host. Guys, the rule the rule is that you can't make other people have exclaves. You can take your own exclaves. We're hopefully going to fight China. Very nice. Yeah, it's the anti- look, it's not the East Asian hotbox, it's the anti-China hotbox. John, this is what you need to do about it against China. I support that. I see you are no longer in the war. I mean, th there is stuff you can do, which is defending my coast in case he lands. Yeah, but he was occupying me and blockading me. It was best for me to get out of that war. I mean, fair enough. You're going to stalemate Burgundy out for the land you're occupying. Yeah, unless they launch an attack. Oh, he is attacking. Yeah, see, look, even De Dempsey's... Dempsey. He's landing behind you, mate, in Rouen. He's landing behind you. Yo, Danubia, can you take care of that, please? It's Scandi, so yeah, Danubia can fight that. Danubia? <sighs> you need to attack Rouen. Yeah, me, can you move to Rouen? Dude! Dude. Yes, thanks. Jesus. Danubia, send more troops from your mainland, please. Scandi landed in Rouen with a good attack journal. You're going to need to reinforce that. Dude, he's just decimating my armies because my armies are garbage. Yo, Danubia, move everything over for... <sighs> Danubia, if you don't send more troops, then we've lost. They are not going to land in your land. Dude, <sighs> are we surrendering? I'm surrendering. Both of the wars, I guess. I don't know. I guess. I can't believe they've they found a way to lose. Locos lost. They, they fucking lost that. Scandinavia la launched a massive landing in, in Normandy and uh, the Danubians didn't have any troops there. Well, there's also, if you look at the eastern border in like Nancy and like the other one, they have like 80k troops there for no real reason when they got 30k. Dude, if we release Taiping, it'll fix the economy. Yeah, I can't even. Let's do it. Shadow fund your economy, please. Like, the entire thing. When okay. you make yourself GP, it means nobody can import a thing from the world market. You don't have enough factories and you're going to support China. Blame fucking Lizard. 
What does Lizard have to do with this? I, I tried to make a deal crazy. where I gave up like almost north of China, but he just kept on trying to kill me, so I ended up forming full full China. You should have took that deal and then backstabbed you. Oh, oh look, we're on one head. speed, Loco's losing another war. That's such a common thing in this campaign. Just another Sunday, honestly. This dual monarchy is cursed, and I don't mean that in the Reddit sense, I mean it's cursed. Cursed. You know what you should do, Scorpio? You should piss off every single person in this game. You'll actually have a fun yeah. war. It's the world. That, that is actually what we're trying to do. Release Taiping to fix the world economy. What makes you think I'm joking? Yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, just join one side, the Great War, and win the war. Like, you want to be one of the side. I want to be the fucking endgame boss. He got Batavia to do an infamy thing for Ireland. Damn. Wait, Loco's rage quitting? Is he actually rage quitting? Oh my god. Oh, Loco is quitting. He, he fucking has spam bot for it, but... Well, who's playing with DM? Spam bot? Oh no! Anyway... Watch Rob, what the fuck is happening in Central America right now? I don't know, to be honest. I'm just kind of fucking around. Cool. Oh, kind of just lost my whole army, but mm, that's besides the point. Oh, the insanctions! Oh the my god, he, what? Are you serious? He fucking. <laughs> he got fucking. Oh sanctioned. my god. He fucking ruined the nation. He nation ruined. He did it. Socialist party. Holy shit. Jingo is socialist party. He literally won the election. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Hi lads, got a question mainly for Dempsey, maybe Rithos would be concerned as well, so uh, how do you guys feel about Ethiopia? As long as you give the Somali coast to Batavia, I don't think we care about the inland shit at Absolutely all. Absolutely no problem, I'd be going after you know the Nigeria stuff that borders my one colony there. I do not want to join another one, I know I've said this before, but I don't. Want, I genuinely don't want to join another one of those I wars. mean, do you want to go 1v1 to DM it? You're more than capable of doing it right uh, now, and I know. you can take the southern the southern land okay. to That's get true. more connected ports for yourself. I don't think I want to do that. I want to see how things go. Wait, spend by Can we use the release countries? Can we release Taiping? 18, 19. Yes, okay, so... yes, we can do it. We can do it. World we'll Coalition. Everyone, get, Everyone get into pen. Everyone get into pen. Pen, where's my mill access? Hey, Anatolia right. looks good now. Anatolia map looks good. Mm. Oh! They started. They started it. Get in, get in, get okay, in. Okay, I'm joining. What are the fucking sides here? Uh, I think Nothing it's China cool. versus everyone else by themselves. Alright. Oh, uh, Russia? Ooh. Oh, they're killing China there. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, Where's it's the battle? Like. Oh, it's what? It's an old play. They, 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 you can't. It's blue. Oh, oh yeah. I actually got a province in Tibet. I can build a unit there. Can I join Japan? Yeah, if you could let me occupy some. Why the fuck on, does Ethiopia have that? Back on. I don't know. I have no idea. Listen, man. If you're not going to ever attack, why are you still fighting? Because he declared war on me. I don't know what you're talking. About. Is Russia gonna call in AI Georgia in the war? Yep. Nice. Come on, Kark. He's having some skill issues. Half his army's still in Persia, not moving. I'm about to attack Dali from the mountains. Ah. Yeah, sure. I'm move. gonna just land in Hainan. You need to take your whole army there, Kark. Move everything. Russia yeah, also naval in. invaded you, so... Just called it in. That's fucking awesome. Yep, called it in and then went through immediately after. No neutral, no rule breaks. Ah, well, I mean, he moved his armies in before he called it in, but yeah. yeah that's not against the rules. It's not enough. Yep, way. yep. Not against the rules. Are you fucking kidding me? My, my four, five Tom attack just fucking died. Holy shit. Oh. So this China has a pretty low brigade count for China. He's not mobbed. He's not mobbed. Why is he mobbing? I don't know. Probably because he wouldn't really. Like, was this micro issue? Shotgun, uh, give me money. I need the money now. Um, country are you? Oh, DM. DM. <laughs> okay. Uh, why? Why does it matter? I'm the GM. You better give it to me. <laughs> okay, we want Dali. We want Dali. Come on. Okay, yeah, attack coming and then attack Pora as well. 
I'm hungry. The the base landing. I actually can well, move to encircle. That was an this. extremely good encirclement. We will fund your army, though. We need to attack into Yibin or else. It is funded. It's just it's Why just does an org up. We'll just go to a mountain. Oh, uh oh! Right uh -oh. Reinforcements are coming. One hundred seven brigades. Yeah, are you gonna put Blaze on Taiping? Holy shit, he's got fucking. Put Blaze on Taiping when you no, release it. Oh no, Blaze was playing Cheng. It doesn't matter. He's here. Uh, every mob point moves like thirty-seven brigades. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm actually just gonna wipe this myself. I think. That is actually where the end game for is. We're wiping so Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job, Small Weevil. Thank you. Press O and it shows you where they're moving. It's really useful. Okay, I see uh, 33 in that province coming. That map would look scary. That's actually really useful. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about it. Not a lot of people know that. I'm gonna need a little bit of backup for this, but I'm gonna try to occupy this, uh, the Shangdong Peninsula to stop 100 brigades from moving. And you know you're being attacked in Korea, right? Oh shit. You're I not gonna it. stop them. They're gonna rise up on your army. Good, good call. I didn't see it. How the fuck have you colonized all of that big weevil? Because it was uncontested. Yeah. Hey guys, I just stopped a hundred brigades from moving. Go in, go in, Japan. Why did you stop the attack? I don't I have a fucking leader on it. No, but he has, a, he has a John Cena. Oh, he fucking hell, I didn't see it, sorry. Moving him in, I'm moving him in. No, the 54 shooting comes, Jack. Click on Jillian. It's a skill issue. Oh, okay, hey, right. no Dude, he just reinforced that was about to stack weapon. him. Dude, if Scorpion was playing with like a little bit of effort, he all probably could have got out of that. Okay. The Novi is putting my units man, no, in the I'm country. Wandering, Jillian. Oh, what the fuck is... Oh my fuck. god. Castro, what are you doing? No, 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 I'm looking at both those armies. They have no leader. I'm with Meridian Scandinavia. Is it not Why obvious? Why would you do that? Go on. Are they, go they going to give you the Rhineland and your course? Yes. I'm leaving you to die, sorry. Okay. Next. I think Midnight is worse than Lizard. Oh, Japan, okay. I want you to go on your military tab and click this little button called Auto Assign Leader. Muck stands about to get wiped. Retreating to transports. Retreating to transports. Retreating to transports. Retreating to transports. Yeah, it did get wiped. This was the second. Transport. Retreating to transports. You guys might need Italian support. Go on. We do. We do. Please, please, please. Oh, I just got a baby boom in Sicily. <gasps> mm. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's big. More pops to die when it gets occupied in the Great War. Am I right, guys? Spotgun, can you at least give me money this war? Because Otherwise, just on sphere. If he gives you the money, you can stay in my sphere and get goods. If I get money, I can stay in your sphere. That's I can give you a grant, spammy poo. He'll give you a spam boy. I got quote unquote sub instructions from a marksman. He said to shout at Garnet as much as possible. That was an actual thing he said to him. So There's probably a Chinese general called Xiao Ting. <laughs> Why the fuck is Grand Columbia's current capital in Guantanamo Bay? Don't you have fucking to worry about it. I should, I should clarify that Chong. on Arcadia, but I'm pretty sure that was there. What, 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 what? Listen, man, I'm gonna help you in a second. I just need to finish this occupation. Okay. <laughs> you make, you I'll, be with you, I'll be with you in a second. We're sure about this. I'm about to uh, attack uh, Chong Mugden, so you don't have a Chong. That province doesn't have anything resembling Chong in it. Why would you assume it was just called Chong? Oh, what, what, I mean, what province are you attacking? Chong. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> moving into Mugden. We just wiped another 18 brigades. Do you guys want to release Taiping or King? Ching has more his accepted pumps. He's bigger. Ching is bigger. He cored South China. Remember, because yeah. Ching. He didn't oh. core all of it, but he corded like a, some of it. How did China get into our India? Huh? He's moving oh. into India. How did he get what in there? What the he's fuck? Through... No, he's walking through neutral. And... This might have nothing to do with that, but how come Poland Lithuania has been allowed to fucking sit there with that much land, including fucking Bohemia? I don't know, man. Don't you think with China being this busy, now would be the best time? The deck on uh, Aryanam, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, Poland, but yeah, I guess I'll you know too. I guess I could do both, but I'm not a chud. 
Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, look at how much. Look at how big the dual monarchy army is. Is that revanchism? There's no revanchism buff in this one. No. No. It's very weak. He's still completely fucked though. Unless he gets Italy on his side. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? Oh. what? Sorry, it was shadow funding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? No, he's oh, he's only wasn't performing that about to be shadow funding that oh. <laughs> To be <laughs> honest, <laughs> that is true. He's just letting that get released. Holy shit. I don't think right. any of his. I mean, does he really? <laughs> I, I would have made people full siege me now. It isn't really... I don't think I did see any Chinese armies reinforcing. Whoever releases King, make sure it's a great power who's the strongest because they can defend it. I mean, Didn't King civilize? Yes, and two, I don't so think we need really to release Taiping. We're sending China back to the Dark Age. All right, who's releasing Taiping? He left. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. Now we gotta have to force. No. Him. Right. Yeah, actually, rage quit. What a pussy. Well, in that case, we don't release anything. Let's just take stuff off. No, dude, it's Civ. That's states, and it's a yeah. lot. Right. Yeah. Right. We <laughs> release Taiping, and then we cannibalize it. Yes. Okay. He wasn't kidding. He's actually shadow funded. <laughs> Spud, I'm in a bit of a situation. What's the situation, Virtual Rock? Well, I think America's gonna join the Arcane and Unbox. You try and do your dip though, but I'll, I'm willing to support you. Spambot's gonna dual box to do the peace deal. After that, if we don't have a China, I'm just gonna start eating him. I'll have a peace. The first, the people who fought in the war will get a peace. Liberate country Taiping, right? There we are. Oh, oh my god. Oh, god. oh, oh my god. god. What? <laughs> oh, right. Because okay. it doesn't call that part, so it got to Jeez. How are we gonna partition China? I'm taking Hainan. You put it on AI! Why? Why shouldn't it be on AI? Have, Have you ever seen what, on, what a GT AI does? It's annoying. It backs crises, it fears shit. It's annoying. Am I gonna put it on no AI for the rest of the game? Yes. Yeah. It's, not th it's really not that hard to find subs either. Well, find one then, Weevil. Well, give me out everyone terms. I just clapped the Arcadian army. Do I follow up the attack? How are you winning? In Yucatan. I, I, he attacked me in two, oh. in two battles and I won both. God damn it, I'm fucked. You guys have fun partitioning China. Just do it safe, safe sex. Man. Don't yeah, fight don't amongst yourselves. Some machine parts now. What are we doing next? You'll see. Oh, okay. We're partitioning you. <laughs> 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 um, too funny. Is oh, God, you God, actually God, are God, partitioning me. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm mobilizing. Go! Oh, wait, you're actually partitioning? <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, 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 oh, wait, Uh, Weevil, I'll, uh, I'll pull out of um, Western Sahara in exchange for money. Is that a deal? I don't, I don't even want Western Sahara. I'm just wait, 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 you want money, Spogun? Part of the colonies and I'll give you three mil. I'll pull out one for 1.5 mil, going by the logic. Well, that's pretty. Okay, sure. I can do that. I'm out of Togo. Oh, again, I pulled out of it. Oh, you did? Right, so I'll, I'll create a protector. Yeah, how much are you willing to pay for that? Hmm? 1.5 mil as well. Alright, I'm requesting a grant. Justify transfer. This is the first time I've ever fought a, a war with Lake Chad as like the front line area. <laughs> I didn't come here for nothing, I'm gonna fight a battle at least. It's just BTFOing the Ethiopians for no reason. I didn't come all the way here to not fight a battle, did I? Oh god. Damn, you can, you can establish Protectorate on Tongu? I'm gonna establish Protectorate in Ethiopia. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? I think I am surrendering. Okay, I'm gonna add all the shit. Right, Nigeria, and then I think one more after that. Bornu, and that's it. We'll call it a day. No more beef with Ethiopia. I've uh, done enough to Ethiopia. Good job, Spain. What the fuck are you doing? 
I don't know. What? I did reach enough. Communist? Yes, communist. Oh, communist! Bornu is a state. I'm still taking it. I'm just gonna dig on you for the for West Sahara. Is this even worth taking for the infamy? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not actually taking it. Not worth that much infamy. Basically, the situation is I kind of got dog fucking America out and bounced against me now. All right, America only has thirty nine brigades. It's the fucking northern guys that are the problem. How would the Danubians feel if I just joined and raced up behind them? I mean, you're free to take whatever you want. Is this something that I want to do, though? Or is this something yes, that I think I think, I think you really there? want to in the inside. Wait a second, that's it. <laughs> who, who was the mouse? Hold on a second. China just backed. Oh, but they backed. No <laughs> oh, China backed. They did it. They they saw oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Yeah, the AI they always does it. Like immediately. This. Well, I just got the fucking canal built. Should I just give it to Arcadia for peace, or should I fight it? You've got my support. Might be an interesting naval battle between me and Arcadia. Well, we're already looking at the Americas in the background because Italy is going to get involved there in the next part. So let's start the analysis with what happened there. There was an ongoing war at the start of this part between the two South American nations actually allying together to support Gran Colombia against the two northern ones. I didn't see very much of this war, but I noticed that the South Americans, including our ally the Incas, got destroyed. Any side that Arcadia is on in the Americas is pretty much unstoppable. He's really powerful. Then the Grand Colombians saw some kind of opportunity, so they truce broke on Arcadia, but Arcadia came through and won that as well. And this is the result on the map. I'm going to show you all the populations and stats for the Americas in the next part, because it's going to become very relevant then. So let's look at the war of the anti-Chinese hugbox. This was actually quite a self-aware China player who wanted to limit his own power in certain ways, such as actively inviting a coalition to fight against him, and I think also not mobilising at first was a self-balancing thing. But he also suffered from real skill issues, such as moving through neutral into India, getting encircled in a place he easily could have escaped from, and, of course, shadow funding. So they released the giant 45 million pop nation of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, which is uncivilized, easy for them to start eating, as Hungary already has. That thing is in the Japanese sphere of influence, so if China ever tries to restore order on it, they'd have to fight Japan again, but they wouldn't have to fight the whole coalition. The others would be truce blocked out, so that hugbox better eat the Taiping very quickly. We'll see how that partition goes, and if we can actually get a substitute for China, since that guy rage quit, in the next part. Here's the war analyzer for our very brief war against Ethiopia. A very nice, quick, easy victory. None of his supposed allies helped him. And those are some very nice colonies for Italy. And like I said, it's not very often you get to fight a battle next to Lake Chad, so that's why I named the video that. I was originally going to call it something about the anti-Chinese hugbox. But I'm sure there'll be plenty anti-Chinese hugboxes to name videos after in the future. Next was the Russian reconquest against Arianam, which we could all see coming. As Russia said, China being preoccupied meant that China couldn't help against Russia again. Arianam didn't even try to defend his conquested land against Russia, so even if Russia didn't skillfully push through into Arianam, he could easily have just sat and stalemated out for his cause. It was a very cheeky move to call in the AI Georgia to use them to push through into Arianam and break through his lines. Something so cheeky you'd think it would be against the rules, in a highly meticulous rule set which aims to stamp out every little exploit, it's not there. This was not against the rules. So, fair enough, Arianam should have seen it coming. Russia didn't just take back his course, he also took two further colonies and a region, Trabzon. Those three regions are an additional 1.1 million pops on top of the 1.5 million of Russia's cores here. That is a devastating loss for Arianam. Arianam only has a core on one province at Trabzon that was taken here. So finally in this analysis we're heading over to Europe, where the two wars that were ongoing at the start of this video came to a horrible conclusion for the dual monarchy. I can finally post both war analyzers. The bigger one includes the invasion of Ethiopia and the early Burgundy campaign, so without going in and counting up individual battles, which takes years, I can't really give you numbers for any of the individual fronts or campaigns in this war. So I already explained why Italy and Hungary separately pieced out, leaving the Danubians as the only one to potentially protect the dual monarchy from Scandinavian landings, something which he either failed to do or chose not to do. We learn later that the Danubians is now siding with Burgundy and Scandinavia in exchange for the Rhineland. Maybe that deal actually started earlier. Maybe it started during this war. Local thought that that was just a skill issue, but it was in fact a bit darker than that. Much to the dismay of Spambot, who is temporarily taking over the dual monarchy, 
The Nubian troops are lined up with Burgundy. And with myself, Italy really not wanting to get involved with this again, it's looking really bad for the dual monarchy. We'll see what happens here in the future. As for the peace deal that Scandinavia and Burgundy got on the dual monarchy, well those were two different wars but of course the way it works they were merged to 100 war score total. Using Batavian infamy of course, Scandinavia took back Leinster, the most populous region of the dual monarchy. And then using the rest of the war score, Burgundy went absolutely crazy. First of all of course he took back his core, Burgonia. Then the two regions he took using his infamy were designed specifically to kill the dual monarchy as quick as possible. Normandy is another one of the dual monarchy's most populous regions, but instead of taking Champagne which is right next to Burgundy and it makes sense, he actually took this region all the way down here because it has more pops than that. But also as you just saw from how the troops are lined up, it really makes it awkward for the DM to position his troops for the next war and he has to give up a lot of his territory. But of course to take these two regions with his own infamy because he doesn't have any infamy slaves like Scandinavia, Burgundy had to go to sanctions, crippling his country in many ways, just like Spain did earlier. The Eastern Counties, the last region of England that the dual monarchy had, wasn't actually taken in that peace deal. It was transferred from the dual monarchy to Scandinavia. That's because it was the last reason that Scandinavia had to actually fight the dual monarchy, the last thing he wanted. Spambot thought that that meant that he could then 1v1 Burgundy until the Danubians showed up to replace the Scandinavians. But still, a 2v1 is better than a 3v1. So that's it, we've covered all seven wars that happened in this part. As always, thank you very much for watching. The third compilation of bonus clips from this series, formerly called Deleted Scenes, was recently released, so if you want to see some completely random clips that I took out of this series but didn't really want to throw away, you can support me on Patreon to see them. For example, there was a moment in part 14 where I'm talking to Zombie and I say, if you want to see what happened, you can watch the video in seven months. And that actually turned out to be an accurate prediction because I released the video seven months after that session. But that's too meta to put into the real video so I put it in the bonus clips. Also, join my Discord, follow me on Twitch and have a nice day. That's all for today, goodbye.